Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this video where I'm going to be going over a couple mistakes that I feel like a lot of beginners end up committing um, in regards to the use effect hook. Now, as many of you might know, this is probably one of the most important concepts to anyone who is learning React. And based on my years of experience working with React and teaching React, I realized that there are a couple mistakes that are very common, uh, including mistakes that I used to make myself. So for that reason, I wanted to bring this video. But before we get into the video, if you could leave a like and subscribe, I would massively appreciate it. It will help push my videos to more people and it would be a great way for you to support the channel if you enjoy the video. So I just wanted to ask you guys if you guys could do that. But yeah, that's basically it. So let's get into the tutorial. As many of you might know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning. They have courses on a multitude of topics such as React, TypeScript, Node.js, and much more. A course that I took and I really liked was the Modern CSS Writing Better, Cleaner, More Scalable Code course by Harry Roberts. CSS is definitely one of my weak points in web development and this course helped me find a better approach to learning the technology. One of the best aspects of Skillshare is that it is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so that you can stay focused and learn as many skills as you desire in 2022. The first 1000 of my subscribers that click the link in the description will get a month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Okay, everyone. So the first thing I want to talk about, and I'm going to do this pretty quickly because um, this is not one of the more obscure mistakes that I see happening. Um, this is more of a conceptual issue is um, the fact that a lot of beginners really don't understand the life cycle of a react component. And the life cycle of a react component is most easily seen by understanding how the use effect works. So with the use effect, you're able to execute code or uh, dictate an action, depending on which state of your components life cycle you are. So the quickest way to explain this is the fact that with the use effect, um, you might know that it looks kind of like this, right? And we have this array over here at the end, right? So there's three different steps that can that exist, at least uh, for simplicity reasons, that's what I'm going to be talking about um, in, a in a react components lifecycle. So the first one is uh, when the component mounts, which is when the component appears in the screen, or at least that's the easiest way to imagine it. Then there's whenever there's an update. So there's an update, uh, maybe a prop changed, or maybe a state changed, something that will cause the React to re-render the component, right? And then there's also uh, when the component is unmounting. So whenever the component disappears from your page, um, you might want to do something when that happens, right? There's three different stages and understanding how to execute all of them um, by using the use effect is extremely important. And I see a lot of people only knowing how to do the first one or the second one, or even not even knowing that there that there's a difference between both of them, right? So for the mounting stage, basically the use effect can run only once um, per as per choice if you put an empty dependency array at the end, right? We all know this. So this is known as the mount as executing code when your component is mounting. So here, the code that we're ex executing is just this console log saying that it is mounting, right? And you can see if I refresh the page over here and the page reloads and the component ren uh, renders again, it will mount and console log this over here. Now, the reason why it says twice is because of uh, the React 18 um, update where it makes it so that whenever you're on strict mode like this, it will uh, do some tests, which causes the thing to reload twice. But if I just remove that, you'll see that now it only renders once. It only mounts once and it executes this code only once. But basically, this is just how you run some code when your component mounts. Now, what do we do when it updates, right? So let's think of an update in your component. Well, you might have a state such as this one over here called count, uh, which changes every time you click on this button. Now you see if I have an empty dependency array over here, uh, this use effect won't execute uh, even if there's a change in the component, even when there's an update in the component. Now, if I want to trigger this code based on that, first of all, I'll change this to updating just so that it makes more sense. And then I have to put here what prop or state I want to run this code um, whenever there's a change in it. So I can put, for example, the count state over here. And now you'll see that um, 
it obviously runs once because when the component is mounting, no matter what, it will run the use effect, no matter what you put over here. But now, whenever there's a change in the count, you'll see it will also call this, right? Now, if you have multiple states, it doesn't mean that um, it will update and run this again, like on every state change, it only works with the states that you put over here. So um, keep that in mind. If you want your use effect to run every time there's any change in your component, all you have to do is not even put a dependency array, do something like this. This is commonly known as um, one of the easiest ways to crash your React app because um, sometimes beginners are trying to work with an API or something like that, and they end up um, forgetting to put a dependency array, which means that they fetch their data infinitely. But um, it's not dangerous. Just know that there's different use cases for every kind of scenario. So um, just understanding how the use effect works is very important. And lastly, we want to talk about when the component is unmounting. So for unmounting, it's pretty simple. I'm going to actually come over here and um, create an example and be back in a second when this is done. Okay, so I just created this example over here where I'm going to be able to show you guys the cleanup method. Basically, uh, we have here a component, another component called <laughs> other component, that's what I called it. And inside of it, all it has is a use effect, right? And right now, it's just console logging whenever the component mounts. Now, at the top one, the app component, which calls this other component, it has a button which when you click on it, it will kind of show the component, uh, the other component, it, it, it displays, it renders it, it kind of mounts the component into your app. Now, if I keep click on it, it will disappear. But every time I click on it, it will render it again. So you see that every time it mounts, it will console log because it is rendering the component again. Now, when I toggle back, right, when it's already existing over here, and I toggle back, I want to see something happening, I want to trigger some action that will occur when the component is unmounting. And to do that is really simple. I just come over here, and I return a function. Now this function, uh, it looks weird, but instead of here, whatever you put will be executed when the component is unmounting. So I'm just going to write console log unmount, you'll see that now I can mount a component. And when I toggle it out, it will now execute whatever I put inside of the return. This is really useful for many kinds of situation, especially when you have, um, I don't know, you're making an API request. And before the API request is done, um, you want to unmount the component, or something happens and you unmount the component, you don't want the API request to change your component um, somehow, right, you don't, you don't want the changes that were supposed to happen to continue happening because the component has been mounted. So you can clean up all of your code on this return function over here and make your code better. So this is my brief explanation of all the different stages of a React components lifecycle and how the use effect affects it. And I really think a lot of beginners don't uh, understand this for that. So for that reason, I decided to add it. But now let's talk about a more complex mistake, which I feel like a lot of beginners commit as well. Okay, everyone. So for this example, I created this whole um, piece of code over here, which basically, um, it's simple, but uh, it helps to illustrate what I want to explain. Uh, basically, what it is, is there's imagine you have an app, right? And you have um, a state. Uh, in this case, the state is an object, right? It's not one of the primitive types in, in JavaScript. So it's not a string, it is not a Boolean, it's not a number, it's an object which contains different fields in it, which are important. And this is important to understand, because most of what you work with in a real application is multiple different data structures, either it be an array or an object just like this. And in this example, we created an object or a state that represents an object um, called car, and it has a type and a mileage, right? And you display both the car type and the mileage over here. Now in this example, we have this button over here, which are this input where you can put a new mileage, and just set the SUV or the, the car to have that specific mileage, right? Now what I want to illustrate is the fact that over here in our use effect, um, we put car, the state car to be the dependency, right? And that's okay, right? It's okay. Like it means that whenever there's a change in the car, we're going to execute this code. And you see that that's true, right? Whenever I change the mileage, I come over here and I put 9000 again, or 90,000, you'll see that it will console log that a change has happened, right? Initially, there's two because remember, at least in this example over here, I haven't removed this trick mode yet. I'm just going to remove it again, just so you guys can uh, see that there's a first one, right? The use effect runs once. 
And then when I change it again to another value, it runs again, right? And it continues doing the same thing, right? Every time I make a change, it will update. Now, the problem is the mileage right now is just like this. And this should only run again if there's a change in the car. Now, why exactly is it running one more time, even though there's no change, right? It's I'm just setting it to the same number. This is because when JavaScript compares to objects, right, it won't compare the values inside of it, right? Because if you go ahead and come over here and have two objects, right? Uh, object A equal to something and const object B equals to something. If you try and ask if uh, object A is equal to object B, then you'll soon realize that the behavior you desire with this conditional is not being fulfilled. Um, that's not how you compare different data structures that only works perfectly with primitive types. So if we wanted to fix and so if we wanted to create a behavior as desired, where this will only run when never there's an actual change in the car, um, then we can there's a couple ways we can do this. One clear way is to just put over here, uh, for example, if we know the mileage will be changing, then just put car dot mileage instead of just car. Now, it's saying that the user factor will change depending if there's an actual change in something that has a primitive type, such as mileage, right? And you'll see that this works. If I come over here and set this to a number, it happened to change. But now if I try to set it again, you'll see it doesn't execute because it is the same number. Now, obviously, this is kind of annoying, because you don't want to specify, right? You want to, I don't know, you want to you have an object, you don't want to list all of your values over here. Well, one thing you can do, um, and I don't know if I would recommend this, but just just to let you guys know, is use, for example, create a variable uh, that is memoized version of your values. So you use the use memo hook, and then you specify what properties of your object you want to to trigger uh, change in the in the variable and then just put the variable over here, right? I'm just I'm not going to show you guys this because I feel like uh, this over here is, is the concept that I wanted to to point out the fact that you always have to be aware that objects and arrays won't be correctly triggering the behavior that you want. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to talk about uh, in regards to use effect and mistakes that beginners make is always relying to use the use effect as your method to fetch data in react. Now I've talked about this in the past, but I feel like um, I've never really targeted this, this idea uh, towards beginners, usually it's more I, I usually talk about it in a more advanced video. But I recommend nowadays, to already start thinking about using a library such as react query, or use SWR since the beginning. Now, the reason for that is because a lot of people including myself has fetched data using um, the use effect as your method to fetch data. So what you do is you create a use effect, um, you write your fetch function over here, and then you do something with the data, right? I have an example here where I'm just fetching data from a cat API, and you see the data being displayed or console logged over here. And it's fine, it works, it works. But there's just too many better approaches to something like this than just using a use effect. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about I actually saw it in a video, I'm going to link that video in the description, I didn't, I never even realized it. Um, and it's not that big of a deal. But I just found it kind of funny, uh, because there are some use cases where this might not be your desired behavior. But it is the fact that, as you can see, when I console log mount, it will always mount before the data is, it comes back, which is obvious now to me, like I always I never really thought about it. But um, it doesn't wait for your data to be fetched, right, which is okay. It doesn't really matter in, in a beginner type project. But uh, and also don't think that is because I put the console log before the fetch. Look what happens when I try to put it after it doesn't happen, it doesn't change anything, right? You see, it will still mount first and then finish fetching the data, which is because uh, this obviously takes a little bit more time to, to run because you're making a request. But um, using something like react query, which is a library which allows you to fetch data pretty simply. Um, this be this behavior won't exist. I'm going to show you guys an example over here of using react query just so you guys can have an idea of how simple it is to use. Okay, so what I did here is I just rewrote the code, so that it uses react query instead. And you can see that um, 
you might think it's it's more code, but it's it's truly not because what we have to do is a little bit of setup like boilerplate code, like and max three lines of code that I have to add to the top of my my project so that I can use React query. And then whenever I need to query um, some data from an API, I can just use this hook that is provided to us called use query. And it allows us to fetch the data and also have access to a lot of different pieces of information. So one of those things is, for example, I can know if this the data is loading, right? I can know if there's any error. I can know the error specifically. I can know so many things. Um, if you want to check out exactly what you can know, uh, you can just check out either the documentation or just look um, at the actual code just like this. Um, but basically, all of these things um, would be possible using a use effect, but you would have to make either a hook and you do it yourself and then also spend a lot of time writing that code and, and handling all of that. Or you can just use React Query or an alternative to React Query. Not to mention the caching system for React Query is amazing. Being able to prevent extra requests unless the data has changed is amazing. And I feel like it definitely adds to the performance of an app, not to mention, uh, and this is kind of like an argument that I've always made and I'm, I made a whole rant about this in my um, context API course video, um, you can actually use react query or something like this, as your state management solution in react. So having a use effect and fetching your data from there, it's not that it's bad. It's just that it doesn't make sense when you have great options such as React Query, or if you're using Redux, for example, you can just use RTK Query and it's a better alternative. Now I'm letting you know, and maybe you're a beginner and you, you don't even know anything of what I'm talking about. I'm just letting you know this so that you can get started, right? I feel like a lot of what learning programming is, is just hearing a bunch of concepts and maybe you don't understand them at, at first, or maybe you don't research them at first, but the more you listen to them, you will subconsciously make a connection in your brain and understand what that means. So I've, I've never gone and, and just spent time searching, oh, what is React Query? And then searched it, right? I actually heard that word first, then spend some time doing research about other stuff and that word keep, keep kept like appearing. Then I soon my brain made a connection. Oh, it's probably a data fetching library. Maybe it's a uh, it's this and that and that and then I researched more and then I understood. So I'm just making this so that I can put this in your head so that later on, or right now, whatever stage of your react development journey you are in, you can actually learn this, which is amazing. So this is basically it for this video. I really wanted to make this video because I feel like it's been forever since I've made a use effect video. And a lot of my opinions changed. So I felt like this would be a good opportunity to do so. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting every week and I'll massively appreciate it. Again, thank you so much for watching and I see you guys next time.